Hi everyone, this is the Duke Parenting Podcast. My name is Brian Suleiman. And my name is Linda Ijafo Suleiman. And we have our friends here. Woo! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See, that's why they're here. Welcome. So because like when I was when I was a lot younger, right, I learned how to drive at 15. Mm. My mother did not know I could drive until I bought my first car at 23. Why? Get out of town. Because what happened to my younger brother is proof that my decision was perfect. Because he started, he learned how to drive when he was 16 and he became the family driver. Standard. And by then I'd been driving for almost four years. So even myself, when I was to go somewhere, I'll be like, yo. <laughs> drive. <laughs> so, baby. I lied. What have you liked to me for four years? I do not know. <laughs> so, welcome to the Dual Parenting Podcast. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. This accuser here <laughs> is Linda. And um, on this podcast, we talk about our journey as parents and we share our experiences. But one of the best things about it is that we bring our friends on the, sh- on the, on the, on the podcast to talk about, you know, either the experience, their expertise or both. And today... In, yeah, it's expertise. Yes, yes. And, and this is a topic that I have this always... This one is particularly passionate about this topic. Yes, wanted to talk about that. If I knew this individual when I was pregnant and had Keon, my life would have been easy. <laughs> it would have been a lot easier. See, guys... I would have had five kids by now. Liar! <laughs> I swear, babe. <laughs> babe, if I knew how to handle my the first trimester. Okay, now and that if now she that was in know, my life. Now that you've known this for a couple of years now, how do you not have five kids already? <laughs> money came first. <laughs> <laughs> I have to chase money. But while we are here, we uh we have our friend here. We call her Tolu, Tolu the midwife. Tolu the midwife. Yes. Everybody knows her as Tolu the midwife. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, oh, thank you. Thank you for agreeing to do this. When Ibro told me that you were coming on this um, for this season, I was so happy. Because, because this woman is almost always out of the country. Mm-hmm. And she does a lot of work here. So I don't know how she manages. So I called her and I was like, ah, T, there's this thing going you know, on, you know, our podcast. And she was like, oh, sure, when? I was like, oh, sorry? <laughs> she said, yeah, just when? And then I told her when. She was like, okay, I won't be around. And I was like, there we go. But she was like, um, the very next um, weekend, she was going to be around. And she got back. As soon as she got into the country, she let me know that she was around. And, you know, today she showed up on time. Here we are. Here we are. Thank you. So, um, Tolu, please tell our audience what you do. What do you do? Sure. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Um, But before I say that, before I talk about me, um, you guys have never said no to me. Even at the last minute for everything. So when I saw your message, I thought... It's a no-brainer. Oh, I have to make you. it happen. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a midwife and I'm a nurse actually first and a midwife and I've been doing it for a very long time and I just really love delivering babies. So my work brought me, being a midwife brought me to Nigeria because I found out the shocking statistics. Every every 10 minutes, a pregnant woman dies or a woman dies from a pregnancy-related complication and 80% of the time, it is preventable. So that's how I came to Nigeria. And then I thought, because I actually relocated here in 2016 before COVID hit. Mm. And that's how I thought if I could do health education Mm -hmm. and just, you know, empower, teach people what a lot of first time mums need to know, hopefully we'll reduce our atrocious numbers. So that's what actually initially brought me to Nigeria. Wow. Wait, what? wait. Mm. So you're telling us that every 10 minutes somebody's wife, somebody's daughter, somebody's mom dies because she's carrying a baby for reasons that could very easily, at least most of the time, 80% of the time, could be avoided. Absolutely. It's crazy. That's scary. So that's almost, then it was almost 60,000 women every single year. Yeah. What? And I'm coming from the UK when they do like their inquiries. Um, you ha- In three years, you might have in England... Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, you barely have 300 women die. So to then hear almost 60,000 60, in, in, in Nigeria, Nigeria in one year. Yeah. So that's how I came back. Yeah, it's mind-blowing. So what, what... Why aren't people screaming from the rooftops? You know how we are. You know, when someone goes through something, they might say that's how God's... Because when there's a loss 
Right, right. They say maybe it was God's will, will. Mm. regardless of what happens. Especially Muslims don't really question things mm. in terms of like maternal, they, they bury the woman, isn't it, as soon as possible. Yeah. So we're not really questioning. And then do we have, hmm, this might be a bit controversial, do we have the proper processes where we can ask for inquiries, ask them to open cases and mm. look into why are women mm-hmm. dying? Mm-hmm. So we do not. Do we have the power? Do we so have the, the thing voice? is, you just get tied up in a exactly. whole lot of legal jargon, and they will waste your time and exactly. slow it down until you get over it. Like I've, I've actually seen that happen. So it, it, I, that particular aspect doesn't shock me mm. because a lot of people are just like, you know, it's nothing, nothing come of it. So they mm. just, they just focus on dealing with their, their, their loss. Mm. You know, get over their grief or get, get through their grief and, and try and move on. But if if it's avoidable, then there's no need for people to go through that and have something to to avoid. Whoa. What are these things that are avoidable but still kill the pregnant woman? It's the same things we have where I'm where I've trained. So it's like hypertension, preeclampsia, mm. uh, postpartum hemorrhage. So preeclampsia is high blood pressure in pregnancy. Um, we know when a woman has the symptoms, but some women will have the symptoms but don't, don't know what it is. So she doesn't action it till she starts fitting, having a seizure, and then by then it's too late. Or postpartum hemorrhage. We know some women are going to bleed a little bit more. What facilities, what resources, we we're saying this earlier, do you have to treat the bleeding? We know it's a very common thing. What resources yeah. do you have? And some hospitals don't have it. Mm. And then, you know, the woman dies. Or obstructive labor is a big one because everybody wants to deliver like the Hebrew woman. Mm. So when she labors and labors and labors <laughs> and labors and nothing happens... You know that that <laughs> that that alone was the reason why I didn't. Yeah, we opted for. We uh, opted for CS. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I didn't want to stay there trying to push, 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 or mm. or. I didn't want time. to have to deal with that. You know, mm. her going through all of that we, because sometimes yes, the baby might come quickly, but you mm. can't. You 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 just never know. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I I know someone that went through forty eight hours. Yep. Of labor, and to me it was wild. It I, is. And apparently, once you go into labor, you can't do. And elective CS depends how it's not going to be elective. It'll be semi-elective, usually an emergency. So it's it's not planned. Yes, yes. Yeah, you're not you're not walking in. Mm. Yeah, because even your section sounds like it was semi-emergency it by was. the end of it. It was <laughs> because we planned to do it, but then he decided to come earlier than, yeah. than it planned. It was. It was. So um, while we are on this topic about uh, emergency and not, so I. There are so many of us, especially first-time moms, who do not know that they are going through labor. So that happened mm. to me. Mm. I was in labor um. throughout the night, and I didn't know I was in labor. So what are the signs we should... Because I thought I had Braskin Hicks. Yeah. And, and it was the COVID period, so I didn't really go for um, antenatal. I was mm. always at home yeah. and talking to my doctor and, mm-hmm. and reading, and we were reading. Oh, boy, and, we read a lot. So mm. I couldn't do antenatal. So I had Braskin Hicks, and I thought, yeah, it wasn't labor until I called my, I couldn't take it anymore. Mm. I called my doctor and she told me, start coming to the hospital. Mm. So that was why it was emergency. So what should we look out for when you're having early labor signs? I think the common signs of labor is you were having contractions. Yes. You, but they were painful. So Braxton Hicks is not painful, but contractions is painful. That, that was the difference. Oh, yeah, that's a big right. telltale sign. And it sounded like you're very uncomfortable. I first heard this story from Ibrahim when we were doing yeah. the other show, when he said, your pain threshold is it's really high. high, but it sounded like you struggled through the night yes. still. So that, that was labor. So you're having regular contractions. The contractions will feel like muscle spasms. Your tummy gets really tight, really mm-hmm. hard, mm-hmm. and then it's painful. And then it relaxes. And then it comes, comes back. back. Yeah. So yeah. it kept coming closer and closer. And exactly. I'm like, nah, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So that's a common one. A lot of people wait for their waters to break. Your waters might not break. I was waiting for that one to happen. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not in labor. I have to, my water has to break first. No. But, so it doesn't ah. necessarily. It doesn't. Have to yeah. Break. Another myth that has been smashed. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I deliver babies in the sack, and then you break the waters. Then, yeah. Sorry, it what? Yeah. It's so they're like in like, like a balloon. With- Literally filled with water, and then you've got the baby in there. It is so beautiful, honestly. Yeah, smile on her face. Pictures of that. I, my smile no, on I'm my sure, face. I'm sure happen. on her face. Do you know? But I'm sure that if we check on YouTube. We'll, we'll yeah, see like there's lots that's, of pictures. I've never videos. heard of that. That's mad. It's beautiful. What do you yeah. love about delivering babies? Your birth in life. Hmm. So most babies are really, really wanted. 
most mm. babies even if you deliver a baby to like a mom that is like a addict like a drug addict or whatever she still really wants her baby oh. so most babies are really wanted and it's that moment when you know you've built up for this you guys you've prepared you know you're preparing mm. for, for Keon months, yeah. and then in that moment you then say this is what you've been preparing for and then the baby cries and then you look at each other oh it's just it's magical I think that's <laughs> <laughs> okay I sound a bit dorky now no <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I, I'm, it's just, it, I, we can, we're getting your, like, your, your excitement, your, your love for what you do. We can see it on your face and we can hear it in your voice, you know, the way that you're expressing it. And, you know, even just the way you're describing, I'm picturing it. I wasn't there. Um, I was five minutes late. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I was five minutes late because it wasn't planned. That was not the day, but no jokes. Coming in and seeing her lying there and then he in the cot next to her, I rushed straight to her and I was just like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And then they're like, oh, I see your baby. Mm. You know, and I was like, oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. He's here. And then I went and I looked at him and it's just, it's a lot of emotions at the same time. So I can imagine how it would, ha how much more it would have been, you know, being there and then, you know, you'd hand the baby over and... Okay, so um, moving on. <laughs> so one of the things that, you know, one of the topics, one of the questions, one of the conversations that we keep getting repeatedly from um, mothers and if, in fact, even dads is the conversation around the fourth trimester. Mm. I had no idea that there was anything like that until mm. we were in it. Mm. Um, what, what, are the, what are the preparatory things things that mm. the parents need to know, not just the mom, mm. you know, but the parents. The because, father. Yeah, they well. need to know. Because he has to be there deal. for his yeah. wife. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great question. I think because we all prepare for pregnancy. We all prepare for labor and delivery is like the scary time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But then the reality is you're going home with this brand newborn baby mm. and then you have to, it's almost like you're learning a new skill in real time. Mm, on I think, the job. Yeah. I think that... It's easy to say that some of the tips actually to prepare, I would say, ask for help. Hmm. Prepare your support system while you're still pregnant. So oh. who's going to cook the meals? Who's going to do the night shifts? Who's going to come in and out and check up on mom, baby, mm -hmm. and also on dad? Mm. Um, who's going to help with feeding? Who's going to help with like like a lactation consultant? This um, is key. Sorry, mm, carry on. Yeah, we do not have I'm, a lactation we don't, consultant. Like, I haven't met a single lactation consultant. We have now. <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> we have a few. Okay, so few. sorry. Um, but before we... What is a lactation consultant? Oh, sorry. A lactation consultant is for women who choose to breastfeed. It's somebody who is trained to support you with breastfeeding. So they check your breast. They help you to attach baby properly. They discuss um, how to express breast milk if you want to express breast milk. Just making sure that everything's going okay with regarding breastfeeding. Mm. Solely breastfeeding. That's what a lactation consultant awesome. is. Because, yeah. you know... There, there are times that we needed to figure out how best to hold his head. Absolutely. How to put, remember the last season we went? <laughs> <laughs> how best to position everything. And I just, I was just there most of the time feeling helpless, you know, because it was a lot to deal with. Hmm. So the more people we have who yep. are professionals in this, in this um, area, the better I think it will be for a lot of women because quite a number of women struggle with breastfeeding. Oh, That's yes. It. It's surprising yep. that now that we're talking about it, I'm not having goosebumps or I'm not shivering inside because mm -hmm. when I, I after I had Keon, the fourth trimester was the hardest yeah. for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. It was, I feel like if I had you, like I said earlier, if I had you, if I knew you then, mm -hmm. I would have had kids, a lot mm -hmm. of kids by now because that whenever I thought about it, Baby, I would have. Had I don't like know why this girl keeps saying she would have had a lot of I'll, kids I'll have, by now. I would have not still been in one. I would have been in two or three oh. by now, to be honest. We, we, so two, yeah. Three. Maybe calm can down. we calm down? Calm down. <laughs> two or three. I'm, I'm by I'm, now. You're sweating. I'm sweating. Bro, don't threaten me like this. <laughs> Ooh, daddy. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I I think I would have not been as scared as I was. Mm two years ago to yeah. start trying again because mm. I'm like, ah, four trimester. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Mm -mm. Because I went through, I wouldn't say hell. It was tough. Mm. It was tough. It was tough. I didn't know, like all the things that you're saying now, I know them now because mm. I'll be like, 
I should have had yeah. a nanny ready mm. before, before Kion was, was born. born yeah. mm. I should have had asked for plan. help really from early my, on. Yes, mm. because yes. my mom kept insisting, oh, you need to lie down, you need to sleep. And I kept mm. thinking, she you know what? I haven't breastfed, I, I haven't giving him milk. Um, I think I'm failing as a mother because oh. I couldn't breastfeed him well. Oh, I was in tears. No. And that was part of the reason why I slipped into depression mm. that my friend caught. Mm. And I was like, no, if I'm trying the second time, I'm getting a nanny. I have one now, Absolutely. but we'll I will get, get no my more. mom is there. Ibro is there. My sisters are coming. Amazing. And then, and then, you know, she said something about um, who's going to make the meals and everything. I think it's also important for um, a breastfeeding mom's diet to be a thing that is True. well discussed, well laid out. True. Because there was a lot that she was being told by different people. Oh, mm. eat this. You 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 mm. you produce more milk. Do that. Don't eat this. Eat this. Don't eat that. Yeah, and so, it wasn't healthy. A lot of know, it was just a lot. Do you know the crazy thing is, up until I moved to Nigeria, I didn't know that you had to eat. Certain foods will boost your milk. Because what I've seen, so I'm a midwife. And as, as a midwife in the UK, I've been clinical. And I've also been in the community. So when women have babies, I go into the communities and right, see, okay. into their homes and see them. And the biggest thing with breastfeeding, number one, is Make sure you have the latch correct mm. when you put baby onto the breast initially. And then also putting baby on to the breast within the golden hour, the very first hour of birth, those 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even the World Health Organization says this. If you put baby on within the first 60 minutes, chances are you're going to breastfeed and achieve these breastfeeding goals. So that is a, that is one of the ways to boost. Yes. So when you, when you're, put baby onto the breast, it actually sends a signal to the brain to say my baby has survived. Now the body needs to produce breast milk. There's a massive science behind it. It's not just we're saying, uh-huh. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I so did not start breastfeeding until like two days after. Yeah. yeah. Unless if you are sick, if you've had a massive hemorrhage, if you are unconscious, there is no reason for a woman not to breastfeed. If she wants to, within the first 60 minutes. We are doing women a disservice. That's when we start looking for things to supplement yeah. our milk and get our milk flowing. It's nature, it's science. Because what we were told was that because he came um, like 10 days early. 38 weeks. Yeah, still term. Term so, is from 37. Mm, so because they, they said that because he came a little early, um, her, and she hadn't gone into labor, labor, her body hadn't sent the signals Signal to the to brain say to say, that. okay, the baby is coming. So start preparing us to, pre to, pr to Absolutely. produce. Could have been. Okay. But if the second baby was born, Keon latched onto the breast. Even if nothing comes out, he's suckling, will it stimulate the whole, right. yeah, will stimulate the brain to release prolactin to start producing the milk. Amazing. And you won't have like the flowing liquidy milk initially, but mm -hmm. from 16 weeks, women have colostrum. Mm -hmm. so, oh, from yes, 16 weeks. Yes. And because your body's still carrying the pregnancy, one of the hormones says, no, the pregnancy is still here. So it blocks um, the milk from flowing. But once the placenta is gone, then the milk, yeah, there's a sign. The like, milk what, uh, literally the floor. starts to produce. Yes. So as soon as the placenta is gone. As soon as the placenta is gone, because then estrogen and progesterone falls. And then the body's like, okay, it, it stops blocking the prolactin. Right. And then the milk starts being okay. produced without okay. being too technical. Okay. Sorry. No, 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 that, no, that funny enough, that's, that, that last bit mm. makes me get it. Mm. No way. So it's like, you know, this turns off so that this can literally, turn on. Literally, literally. So it. in the first, in the gold, we call it the golden hour, that's standard everywhere across the world. In the, in the golden hour, don't do anything. Don't bath the baby. Don't do anything. I deliver babies onto the mum, dry baby on the mum, put a clean towel, and then babies start breastfeeding. Unless if there's another medical reason mm -hmm. or if the baby needs like, you know, help like, yeah. or whatever, then yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's one way to combat, um, to get your milk to start flowing. flowing. Yeah. Do you get, get that? Do you get that? <laughs> uh -huh. Golden hour. Um, First 60 minutes. Skin to skin. So mm. that's baby's naked skin on your skin, a baby's naked body on your skin. Um, and then we start breastfeeding. But just going back a few more steps in terms of what else do you need mm -hmm. to prepare yeah. for the fourth trimester? Mm. So asking for help, building your support system, um, planning who's going to do what and when, setting up the home. Dad's also walking through the routine. 
So you have to have a routine because if moms are breastfeeding and you don't want to introduce the bottle just yet, even if you're expressing, who's going to who's going to stay up and do what duties? So or if you if you are expressing, moms have a night off, dads feed. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like shift work. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if moms exclusively breastfeeding and constantly breastfeeding, babies feed on demand every hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. You are not getting any rest. Mm-hmm. It's the worst thing for your mental health. Mm-hmm. So it's having a routine. Who's going to do what when? Mm-hmm. And then just asking for help. I think that's the biggest thing because moms feel if I ask for help, it means I'm a bad mom. It, feel, it, it feels like I'm failing. Mm. No, asking for help really, really early. Plan it before you have the baby. You know, when we're having a wedding, when we're getting married, we have a wedding planner. Yeah. We have this person's doing yeah. this, this, but why don't we do that for babies? Yes, why don't we? That's true. Why don't we do it when like we're having when, babies? When you put it like that, that, that is, I mean, it's straight logic. So guys, please, as you would have a planner for your wedding, plan your your the birth of your child and what comes immediately after it is extremely important um it will save you a lot of trouble it will save you know the mom you know heartache and you know slipping into um depression it's scary because a lot of the time you miss the signs because everybody just feels like oh i just overwhelmed because there's a new baby so I, based on all the information that we just got now, planning will save you most of that. Okay. I mean, obviously, it won't, it won't sort everything out, but it would do it would go a long way. Okay, so because I put I, I, I had to put on my Insta story so that I could find out from other mothers mm. what they wanted to find out from a mm. midwife slash lactating nurse. Um, someone asked if um, using an electric breast pump mm. would m- stop the, the reduction of her producing milk. Does Mm-mm. that... Doesn't, no, it doesn't. It doesn't stop the production. It, sometimes you may overstimulate. Mm. So if for if you're not breastfeeding, because ideally you want to try and express from the breast every three hours mm-hmm. because you want your milk to be producing regularly. So if you are feeding every three hours, then don't express. But if you are not feeding directly from the breast every three hours, express. But it won't stop your milk coming in because the body's just saying, I need to produce to meet this demand, basically. You know, that's the mistake, one of the mistakes we made because she would feed... And then she would uh, try and express, uh-uh. you know, just uh-uh. so that yeah. if she needed to take a quick nap, you know, I could feed him. Oh, man. I wasn't getting that nap because I was feeding mm. him. Because she would, oh, man. I wasn't getting it. That does a number on your mental health. It did. Yes. Mm. It did. It mm. did. Because at some point, a friend of mine who is also a nurse um, suggested that I just carry myself, go to a a hotel and go and stay. Thank God for her. Yeah, which I didn't do. Oh, wow. Because I thought I was still, I was I was in that WhatsApp group of I'm a bad mom. No. If I leave my son, a newborn baby, mm. leave my husband, leave my mom and just go and I just couldn't. So it was till my friend now caught it and told my husband, your wife is slipping into depression. She mm. has to sleep. She has to rest. You, you have to tell her to rest. Take yeah. the baby we away had to, from yeah, her. We had to force her to rest. So that Good. was, yeah, that was the only way Good. I could get and then did you get your time off, time away? Oh, yes. Good. I slept. Good. <laughs> and it makes you feel so much better, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it did. Hmm. Do you know the difference between, like, the first night that she slept for six, was it, it was like five hours. Five hours. She slept for five hours straight for the first time, right? And this was after I'd had it, and I'd just gone and gotten, like, a whole bunch of, a range of um, baby formula. food. Formula. Mm. And then we now started trying, then Kion really just, Likes the first thing we put in the bottle. Um, that night, she slept for five hours, right? And the reason why she woke up was because in her mind, I'm supposed to wake up. Aww. So she wakes up and by then I'd gone to work. I came back super early because I, I think I only, I only had like one scene and I came back home and it felt like I was looking at a completely different person mm. than the person I'd been seeing for like the last couple of months because mm. her skin tone was almost completely back to normal. Mm. Her eyes looked brighter. She actually smiled and it reached her. I, like, it just felt like that five hours just brought back, you know, yeah. my wife. The yeah. And yeah. It was crazy. Mm. Just five hours straight. The importance Because of she was surviving on two, like, 30, one and a half hours, two hours between, ah, it, was, it was wild. Mm. Okay, while we're on the subject of um, postpartum depression, what are the signs that we should look out for? Postpartum depression, so withdrawal. So before postpartum depression, lots of women have baby blues. Mm. 
So baby blues is, it can happen anything from day three, usually when your milk comes in, to day 14, to day uh, 17. So it, hap- it can happen up to... Oh, a two-week period. Uh, yeah, two-week period, exactly. <laughs> and that is similar to postpartum depression, but the difference between them is postpartum depression lasts longer than baby blues. Uh, baby blues. So it's feeling withdrawn, feeling tired, not being interested in doing anything with the baby, mm-hmm. um, sleeping, isolating, um those are the common ones that comes to my mind. But if it continues for longer than 14 days, then we think it could be postpartum depression. Mm. And I think if you are thinking about it, speak to someone. Mm. Like we're, we've gone past the times where mental health is a disease yeah, or, is a, you know, yeah, it's a condition. Mm. Speak to someone about it and get help early. Mm-hmm. Mm. Regarding like the speculative work, but it's a worldwide statistic. No, no, that's Nigeria. Nigeria. Her rates are really high. Really yeah. high. Because she said that in 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 Britain, that's Wales, England, Ireland, Ireland, Ireland Scotland. Scotland. They only have like 300. In three years. Less than 300 in three years. Ah, then here yeah. we have thousands. Thousands. It's crazy, man. And we contribute to 20% of the deaths within sub-Saharan Africa. So we're quite, if you think about Sub-Saharan Africa and we do one-fifth one of that, we contribute one-fifth. It's That's so a lot. It's insane. That's why we have NGOs, but then just question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so what are the, what are the main, what, what shocked you the most about working in Nigeria as compared to working in the UK? So I'm not clinical in Nigeria. It's just oh, health education. Yeah, it's just health education um, through different ways, like, you know, corporates, mm-hmm. employ me, direct mm-hmm. with women. Um, the biggest shockers were some of the things that we do, like not putting baby on the breast straight away, mm. women not seeking services, women not attending antenatals. I had a woman who sent me a message. She says she's six months pregnant and she hasn't seen anybody. And she says she's sending me a message because she doesn't want her baby to die and she doesn't mm. want to have a cesarean section. And I said but you need to have antenatal. There's no way around that because we need to check that you're fine and the baby's fine. It's like, you can't compromise on antenatal. Once you get pregnant, then this is something you have to do. But then you then wonder what's going on behind closed doors that we're not privy to because she hasn't had any scans. She's not attending any antenatal appointments. Yeah. Another thing that I think is absolutely crazy, and I know I keep saying this, is women who run away from services because they said she needs to have a cesarean section. She says, God forbid, over my dead body, it's never happened to me. It's never happened to anyone in my family. Yeah, it's, not gonna be, it's not going to be me. Mm-hmm. Or you tell a woman she has hypertension in pregnancy. She says, no, she doesn't. Starts taking herbs. It's like, make it make sense. You're, well, I'm telling you this because I want you to survive because what can happen to you and your unborn yeah. baby? Mm. It's not... It, it's not about your family um, or people who do a lot of medical, um, uh, spirit, they spiritualize mm. medical things. Yeah. Um, so it's things like that, that you hear that is quite recurrent or old practices like um, cleaning the baby's stomach with engine oil. Sorry? And, uh, cord, cleaning the baby's cord with engine oil and that kind of madness. Yes, yes. What? So there's a lot of unlearning and people have to be ready to unlearn, Fair. to relearn. Yeah. yeah. So it's things like why that. Oh, yeah. Clean? Why? why, why, they've, why? They've, that, I just <laughs> want to know why. Is it that so that it can fall off or that... So that they want... don't get an infection, so that, that it is heals. More infection. No, no, no. So, but so, if they've been doing it for centuries. Eh? So... <laughs> <laughs> it's like sorry to cut you short Ibrahim but why do we have babies and then when you know grandparents are bathing the babies they throw the babies up three times they shake them by the arm shake. why do we do that so oh. wait that's not that's not necessary no I thought, you know, why them. do we bathe newborn babies with that really harsh coin coin what's coin coin in sponge, sponge. Mm-hmm. with that really harsh sponge and palm oil so that they don't have beer Let's think about an average day. Oh, you'd know that one. Wait, wait, an average day when you like, walk into a supermarket, how many people do we smell that have beer, body odor? But I'm sure they'll bath, they'll bathe with that coin yeah. coin. You see? So we have to question some of the things we do. Wait, for real? Yeah, yeah. sorry. Engineer, you're still on the no, no, I'm, I'm see, you know, you know, you hear engineer, you you just put down, it, you just wrap it up, keep it somewhere, you come back to it. Then you now hear palm oil. Palm oil and Oh, you know not the palm sponge. oil. No. You know, 
Wendy said it in her own podcast, uh, her own oh, that's true. That that's true. She mentioned that her mother it. wanted. She said no, no. no. Mm-hmm. I remember that. I remember that. That's wild. But I, 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 I get you, and I hear you. The one my parent, my mom did, which I was okay with, was you know the yeah. flexible mm. arm thing. Did I'm you just throw key on. No, 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 no. Okay, I, I, I did that, but it was. <sighs> li- <sighs> he did it. So he was sell down, sell down. It was not. Oh, okay. I was, I was playing. You know, his mom was not around, so I'm like, good. The adult Ooh. is not here, so <laughs> so I was playing with him, and then I flipped him. I used flip. to flip him. Yeah, I'll flip him. Upside. Now the boy likes and to he go loved ups, it. Upside. Oh, upside down. loved it. So, but you know, it wasn't a thing of oh, we're giving him a bath, so let's let's shake him and toss him into the yeah. air. And no, 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 upside down. No, no, no. Yeah. So what my mom did was just all those yeah, massage was, his body. And he used to Which love is it nice. Too. Babies do. And he he ah, just used to have this smile, yeah. and then he would poop. Yeah, yeah, and then fall asleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's one, and and I was always there. I think that's another reason. I was, there are so many things I will not do in the second. Mm. Mommy is giving the baby a bath. Okay, I'm sleeping. So because so, I would get up and go. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And watch. <laughs>